Let's talk about the brand new Perplexity AI feature that nobody is talking about and how you can use it to enrich your articles. Now, I'm going to be using two men as an example, as usual, purely because I have good information on two men and everything that they sell, etc. already in my brain, so I don't need to check things. Basically, this new feature, if you click here, you can actually see, it says, if I just refresh this so it's back on the normal one, it says focus, right? And you can choose a focus. Now, another really, really interesting one here is academic, right? Because you can do things like spe specify that you want data. So for example, find me some data about suits, right? And we'll just see what this comes up with. This isn't the point of this video. I'm just curious what uh, this actually says. So we'll see here, types of suits, suits, fashion, history, et cetera, et cetera. I'm kind of curious where it's getting this information from. So semantic scholar, semantic scholar, semantic scholar. So it looks like it is, uh, oh yeah, it's actually finding proper references. That's really, really interesting. So it's obviously, it's using something called semanticscholar.org. And this is probably something that I'm gonna uh, steal. So uh, this is a really, really interesting uh, piece of information. Let's just read through this. So. Suit purchasing trends. A study focusing on senior men's formal wear revealed that an overwhelming 95.5% of participants purchased ready-to-wear jackets. Interesting. So senior men, so like the, what this would tell you is the, you know, the target market, and this is actually true if you look at who buys suits. 95% of uh, senior men have bought ready-to-wear RTW jackets. This indicates a strong preference for off the rack, uh, preference for off the rack suits among older gentlemen, highlighting the importance of well-fitted, ready-made options in the market. So that's super, super interesting because your target market as two men is actually people over 40, I would say, so uh, and male as well. And we do sell ready-to-wear as well. Uh, fit challenges. The same study found that individuals with ab uh, abdominal obesity type and trunk waist type body shapes reported a higher frequency of complaints about the size of ready-to-wear jackets. This is very, very common because suits have uh, a specific uh, cut according to how tall you are and how broad you are. But people with abnormal sizing, so people who are obese or people that, I don't know, have really broad shoulders but really, really skinny uh, body, they, they don't make suits that fit for those kind of people because they're, if you think about it, it makes sense. It's abnormal. It's like they don't make size 25 shoes very often. You have to go to a specific shop to buy larger shoes if you have a really, really big foot because why would Doc Martens make size 25s? It doesn't make sense for them financially. Uh, I mean size 25 UK, by the way, if you're wondering. Um, so yeah, this is super, super interesting, to be honest with you. And what kind of what I want to discuss in today's video is taking this information and how you can then enrich your content with it. So We'll just keep looking because I do find this super interesting. Key considerations when buying suits. Fit priority areas. Shoulder area is the most important. Front width and back width are also very, very important. Um, again, this can help you enrich an article because now you could be like, you could focus your article around or what your AI is writing about suits around the shoulder area, the front width and the back width. Size recognition. Interestingly, only 38.1% of respondents in the study claim to know their suit size. That does not surprise me. With many finding suit sizing difficult to understand, this highlights a potential gap in consumer education regarding suit measurements and sizing. Also, in my head, while I'm thinking about this, I'm actually thinking how this could then be applied to your website, right? And you could have like an AR, AR um, alternative reality or augmented reality, sorry. Um, scanner of your body to help people choose a suit uh, size, which is something that we have actually previously discussed uh, in the company. Common fit issues. The study identified several areas of dissatisfaction with formal suits, including loose neck width, drag lines on the back of the neck, poor fit on the front opening, mismatched shoulder slope. This is very, very interesting for me. Fashion trends and suit design. Historical influence. Contemporary fashion designers often draw inspiration from historical costumes, including those from the 19th century. This influence can be seen in women's fashion collections where designers incorporate elements of historical suits into modern designs, 3D elements, suit materials and sustainability, cultural fit uh, uh, in suit design, and conclusion. So this is just, it's a little bit more refined than if you just said, find me 
uh, some data about suits. If I just do the same search on a normal perplexity uh, search, it won't be as, wait, is this normal? So let's just do this search again. Find me some data about suits. This is the normal one now. And yeah, it always gives the kind of the same information, which, you know, think about it from this angle. And this is something I'm definitely going to have to consider putting into Harbor now. What's more useful to someone who's writing a blog post, right? Um, the, the global size of the men's suit market or something like this, which shows a study on senior men's formal wear revealed that an overwhelming 95.5% of participants purchase ready-to-wear jackets. So for me, what's actually more enriching it to say would be you know, something like 95% um, of senior men have bought ready-to-wear jackets uh, recently or in the past year or whatever it might be, according to this study. And then you can actually link the study um, because you actually have a link here. And this is for men over 50. Okay, so again, super, super interesting. And then also, I just think this kind of data is much better than just, like, if you're reading a blog post about suits, you don't really care necessarily, you know, the the um, the market will reach a USD 20 million by the end of 2027. Like, it's just not, it's not enriching the article in a sensical way. It's just giving you random stats. So I do find that very, very interesting, actually. Um, there are some things here that are useful, like, um, you know, ready to wear and uh, made to measure is kind of the divide. Um, and then reasons for the change towards less and less people wearing suits. I mean, this is also something that could enrich the article, but they, en they enrich the article in different ways. So it's almost worth having both. Whereas, you know, previously, especially with Harbor, and also uh, if you watched my recent video on, um, on prompting, which I'll just get that prompt up right now so that we can see it. And also you can watch the video, we'll leave a, description, uh, we'll leave a link to it in the description of this video. But let's just uh, have a look at the prompt. So previously what I was doing was, this is the prompt here, and then information, there are still three people using it, which is really, really cool to see. But what I, would, what I was saying you should do is you should copy this response from perplexity and put it into the prompt here. But you could actually now enrich it even further with sources as well, because previously I wouldn't really recommend uh, using sources from um, other uh, businesses they're in competition with, but you know, having a source as semanticscholar.org slash paper, that's totally fine. So what you can see here is I've added this data now and it has a source, right? So now you could build, you could, you know, make um, a much more interesting data visualization or this enriches the content in a much more interesting way rather than just these numbers. Now you could put both as well. Uh, so underneath here, I could just also paste this. Now you're giving it a lot of information. Uh, and to be honest with you, none of these are necessarily in competition with you anyway. So that would actually work quite well. So let's actually talk about the reason that I wanted to make this video, which was the social aspect of this. Now, it, everything that I'm going to show you is very, very similar to what I just showed you before. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, can you find some data and information about... Um, Kit on suits, right? So the article, let's say that I want to write, is about kit on suits. So this prompt, by the way, you can find it in the description of this video. I've been working on this prompt for a while now. It's going to get better and better and better, and the things that you feed to it are going to get better and better and better. So let's just say kit on suits. I uh, know best kit on suits 2025 would be the keyword, and then let's see what this comes up with here. So. Kits on suits are widely regarded as some of the finest and most luxurious ready-to-wear suits in the menswear market. Here's a detailed look at what makes kits on suits stand out. So kits on is renowned for their exceptional quality. They're blah, blah, blah. Is this all just Reddit? Yeah, literally it's just Reddit. That's pretty interesting. The Barchetta Pocket, which I've never even heard of, uh, which is super interesting, is made by hand with individual canvas to hold its shape, similar to the technique used by Cesare Tolini. That's very, very interesting. I've never even heard of this Barchetta Pocket. Uh, they use ultra-fine fabrics, blah, blah, blah. I kind of wanted to get a bit more of an idea of what people thought 
Opinions on kits and suits are generally positive but mixed. This is the kind of thing that you can really, really start to enrich, like a product review article or whatever it might be. This is the kind of information that people want. So many consider kits on to be amongst the best ready-to-wear suits available. Some experts praise the quality on, of materials, but note that, like all luxury goods, there are diminishing returns for the enormous uh, increase in price. Critics argue that while the quality is undeniably high, the extreme prices may not be fully justified by the materials and workmanship alone. If you buy a new one from Kitten store, then maybe I could get behind that. In conclusion, Kitten's suits are undoubtedly of exceptional quality, featuring some of the finest. So what I kind of want to highlight here is the difference between this and then if I just do the same search without the focus on social, as far as I know, there will be nothing negative in here. It will all just be positive, positive, positive. Because what it does is it takes the information straight from the horse's mouth. And Kiton aren't going to say that their suits are overpriced, right? Like, let's be honest. In Kiton's mind, they're not overpriced, which I can kind of get behind both arguments if you're curious about what I think. I think that, you know, if you've got the money, then Kiton is number one in the world. That's the reason they're expensive. Um, it's like Maserati or whatever for cars or, you know, I don't know anything about cars, but Ferrari for cars. Y you're paying, to a certain extent, you're paying because it's a Ferrari. Yeah, I don't care about cars. But yeah, so it, you're paying for the brand to a certain extent and that's kind of the point. So people who say it's overpriced probably just can't afford them, unfortunately. That's the way it goes. They should be buying, you know, Hugo Boss or something that's much, much cheaper. Um, so what kind of what I want to show is if you just do a normal perplexity search here, like you can see here, there's nothing negative about um, the, the company because it comes from Kitten's website, which in my opinion is not actually that useful. So this new focus feature really allows you to add something that you haven't previously been able to add to articles, which is what people think, people's opinions about this topic. That's why I want to show you in this video, this new perplexity feature with focus makes things really, really interesting. You can focus on data, you can focus on social, and you can get more of a complete idea about what you're writing about. And then you feed that to AI, uh, just like before. So I could then feed um, this as well to the AI. And then now when we write the article, it's going to be much more of a complete article. So I'm just going to remove all this because this uh, does not need to change. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be working on this prompt, guys. It's getting more complicated every day. I have a prompt now that gets 99% on GPT-0, so make sure that you stay tuned for that video that's coming very, very soon. If you're watching all the way to the end of the video, guys, you're an absolute legend. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you very, very soon with some more content. Peace out. Watch this video if you think that AI-generated content won't 